we must always take cognizance of the fact that Chief Justice Ben Kiwanoka has set the bar for the administration of justice very high for us. Therefore, in the exercise of our mandate, we must always be driven by the need to respect and protect the rights of everyone, advance the rule of law, and promote the cause of justice in accordance with the oath we each took, namely, to do right to all manner of people in accordance with the constitu Constitution of the Republic of Uganda as by law established, and in accordance with the laws and usage of the Republic of Uganda without fear of favor, affection, or ill will. And at the end of which oath, we beseech the Lord to help us live by that oath. There is no denying your excellency and dear participants that the cancer of corruption exists in the judiciary. But this is because the judiciary is an integral part of our society, which has sadly been pervaded by this monster. There is the endemic delay in rendering justice and unacceptable conduct within the judiciary in the name of dependence, independence of the exercise of judicial function. Your Excellency, let me dwell on this. The Constitution accords independence in judicial function. It is a function which every one of us must protect for judicial work to be done. However, and this you've spoken about, and I thought I should seize this opportunity to mention, the exercise of judicial function comes with responsibility. Independence of judicial function must be done within the constitutional provisions according to such independence and protection. In one word, responsibility. I'll take an example which has been of great concern to Your Excellency, the grant of bail by judicial officers. The Constitution gives discretion to judicial officers to grant bail. But the law itself and decided cases are bound that the exercise of discretion must be judiciously done. A judicial officer does not wake up from the wrong side of the bed and deny bail to an applicant, or wake up from the right side of the bed and grant bail to all and sundry. The rules for grant of for, for bail, and this is just one instance where discretion is exercised, is very clear. There are many factors in addition to the judicial official, <coughs> official or officer satisfying himself or herself that the applicant will actually turn, back, turn up for hearing when the time comes. But there are many other factors. It is the duty of a judicial officer to look at the entire circumstance when considering bail. There are instances, for example, where a grant of bail may work adversely against the applicant. We know of cases where people have taken up the law into their hands and consigned beneficiaries of bail to their graves. 
we know that capital offenses of whatever nature is of grave concern to the community. So in the exercise of judicial discretion to grant bail is the duty of a judicial officer to look at all these circumstances and boldly, without fear or favor, make the decision whether to grant or not to grant. For me, as head of the judiciary, I would like to see judicial officers making, taking into account these considerations and noting them down so that there is no doubt as to what could have moved a particular judicial officer to grant bail or to exercise discretion in other circumstances where the law permits the exercise of discretion. Your Excellency, I remember it was at your instance that we should have had a meeting between you and the entire judicial officers of this country. This was before COVID-19 set in with the consequential decision to lock down. It is my hope that sooner than later an opportunity will present itself. Judicial officers are about 400 only. An opportunity will present itself where we can have frank, meaningful, and useful discussion about this subject and others which you have repeatedly raised are of very important ideological This, they present very important ideological dis, di, discussion. Your Excellency, corruption, the delay in rendering justice, negate the ideals for which Chief Justice Benedict of the of paid with his life. Justice must never be, never ever be for sale. It is monstrously repugnant to turn justice into a commodity, thereby according justice to the highest bidder. The judiciary administration has zero tolerance for the repugnant, for the rep the repugnant ill of corruption. The Excellency, I can say with utmost certitude, the Chief Justice of Uganda, the Deputy Chief Justice of Uganda, the Principal Judge, the Secretary to the Judiciary, the Chief Registrar, who constitute the top management of the Judiciary, have zero tolerance for any form of corruption, be it the crude corruption of exchange of money or the other soft corruption, which may not even involve exchange of monies, but which conflict with the oath we took, not to fear, not to favor, not to be driven by affection, or not to bear ill will against people.